Hello everyone, I'm Dan Philgreen, and this is Shell Point Today for the weekend of September 27, 28, and 29. On today's show, we'll meet some Shell Point employees who took advantage of a class to improve their English speaking skills. But first, a reminder that this Friday brings some free entertainment for everyone who loves organ music. Carl Cole, a professional organist for more than 50 years, will be entertaining this Friday on the Allen Digital Theater Organ in the Woodlands Commons. He'll be offering two free concerts, Friday at 2 p.m. and again at 7 p.m. You can attend one concert or both. It's a day of free musical entertainment at the Woodlands Commons. And on Saturday, we have our first flu shots of the season. Yes, it may seem like we're still in the heat of summer, but flu season is coming fast. Flu shots change every year, and this year's formulations of flu shots have arrived at the medical center. So mark it on your calendar, Saturday from 8 a.m. to 12 noon in the medical center on the island. If you have any questions, call the medical center at 454-2146. Last week, we had a graduation ceremony for several Shell Point employees. These men and women from countries like Haiti, Mexico, the Dominican Republic, and Nicaragua had taken a summer-long class to help improve their English speaking skills. What's unique about this class is it was taught by Shell Point residents Judy Kinzinger and Eleanor Pease, who has a PhD specializing in teaching English as a second language. Other Shell Point residents also helped as volunteers, providing conversation time once a week for the employees. We dropped in on the graduation ceremony. My name is Gibraltar Saloni. I'm from Haiti. My name is Angida Serralis. I'm from Haiti. My name is Teopila Zayas and I'm from Mexico. My name is Miriam Gonzalez. I am from Nicaragua. My name is Miguel Santillera and my country is Dominica Republic. My field is teaching English to speakers of other languages and linguistics and so when I came here I saw that there was a need for English among our employees. So many of them speak English as a second language and they needed greater development in conversational skills. Judy Kinzinger and I are uh, co-directors and then we have uh, trained volunteers. Our focus is on conversation and having them develop their conversational skills. I think we all know, all of us who've learned a second language, you can know the rules and memorize the vocabulary, but then go out on the street and you don't understand what the people are saying. And so uh, we realized there was a need for conversational skills. Everyday life themes, like what you heard today was, um, uh, these were paragraphs on their dream house. So we've gone through the furniture in a house and the rooms and all of that. My dream house is the large house in the country. Is surrounded by beautiful fields and trees. They are animals in the fields. My house has large windows and balconies where I can stand and look at the river that flows near my house. I hope my dream comes true. <laughs> We saw definite improvement in their conversational skills, They're, and they were much more relaxed. And you could see that in the reading that they did. But they did it, and that's the point. And they can talk to you, and that's the point. Usually when I talk to people, I was shy. Now I try to be cool. That's better now. <laughs> yeah, thanks to you both, Lena and Judy. Shell point too. Yeah. Thanks to Shell Point. I was housekeeping tech, I was cleaning carpet, now I'm cleaning window. The class, that's the perfect class. Because <laughs> our two teachers, they are so cool, and our visitors too, they are fine. She is one of my favorites. <laughs> Tell me about Gibberson. Well, he's one of my favorite students, among many. <laughs> uh, Gibberson has really helped us keep the, the class going. He always has good questions. And you can tell that he's learning because of the questions that he asks us. And then he participates very well in conversation. That's a big help. How to make a shake, okay. the charity. Okay. How to give people money. Yes. <laughs> uh, in class, we had them actually write checks so that they could um, write checks for rent or whatever that they needed. And I think they really enjoyed that because I said, you can write any amount you want. <laughs> So what was yours? 
I, I, I couldn't even. <laughs> I need a computer to wire it because that was too much. <laughs> I can keep it in my mind. <laughs> Judy and I both get very excited. We love the people, and you could see the demonstration of their love for us when we got those hugs, when they got their certificates, and uh, when we see them as we go around the island and they know us and they can speak to us. We are passionate about it. <laughs> Coming up, we're replaying some of the week's best stories from Shell Point TV. But before we do that, let's cover all of this weekend's happenings, Academy News, menus, and church news. Welcome to the weekend edition of Shell Point TV's Happening segment. I'm Bev Chandley, and this is Mary Franklin, and we're going to go over the activities offered for you for the whole weekend. We're going to start Friday morning at 8.15 with the stamp ministry going on. That'll be down in the stamp room on the island. And from 8.30 to 11.30, you'll find the marketplace set up in the administration courtyard. 9 o'clock is the time the round robin men's doubles tennis will be played down at the Woodlands Tennis Courts. 9.15, we have pavilion auxiliary orientation. That's in the hospitality room of the Village Church, and sign-up is required for that. At 10 o'clock, we have canasta. That'll be in the game room of the Woodlands. And we go to the afternoon for 12.30, Mixed Progressive Bridge. That'll be in the game room of the Woodlands. We have 1.15, table tennis in the tarpon room. And then we also have a 1.15 quilters group in the osprey room on the island. 1.30, we have our first vespers at the community room of the arbor. 2 o'clock, time euchre will be played in the sable room of the Woodlands. We have an organ concert with Carl Cole at 2 o'clock at the Woodland Commons. 2.45 is the time for great decisions to be made. They'll be discussing Egypt in the Manatee Room. At 2.45, our second Vespers for the day is in the Community Room of King's Crown. We move to 6.45 where we have our evening game night at the Resident Activity Center. And then we round things out with a second organ concert with Carl Cole at 7 o'clock. That'll be at the Woodland Commons. That concludes our Friday lineup, and here's Mary for Saturday's activities. From 8 to 12 on Saturday, resident flu shots will be given out at the medical center on the island. Also at 8, the round robin men's doubles will be playing at the tennis courts. And at 9.45, if your game is more duplicate bridge, you'll want to be in the manatee room on the island. The Model Yacht Sailing Club will be sailing in the Commons Lake at 10.15 Saturday morning. And at 1 o'clock, chess will be played in the Library Lounge of the Resident Activity Center. And 1.15 is the time for table tennis, and that will be available for the rest of the weekend in the Tarpon Room. 3.15 basic line dancing will take place in the Health Club on the Island, and we wrap up Saturday with Duplicate Bridge being played in the Manatee Room on the Island starting at 6.30. Bev, what happens on Sunday? Well, Mary, we're going to start out at 9 o'clock on Sunday morning with Christian Life Studies. That'll be in the Game Room of the Woodlands. And then 9.15, we have a second Christian Life Studies. That'll be at the Village Church. Our morning worship at the Village Church begins at 10.15, and that is also broadcast live on Shell Point TV, Channel 12. We move to the afternoon at 2 o'clock, where the Mixed Golf League will be at the Shell Point Golf Club. And then we conclude the weekend activities with our 6.15 evening service at the Village Church. Well, thank you for joining us this weekend, and we will see you back here next week. Hi, I'm Terry Coleth with your Academy information for the weekend. At 9 o'clock Friday, the Life Review Reminiscence class continues in the Buttonwood Room of the Woodlands. I'd like to tell you about our new classes next week. On Tuesday, the Story of India with Professor Adrian Kerr. On Wednesday, specifications for buying a new computer with Jim Plummer of Parkwood, and Intermediate Bridge Session 1 begins with Susan Willoughby. Also, so you've got Windows 8, now what, with Floyd Jamison of Parkwood. On Thursday, we have Academy on the Go, Fly Fishing on the Causeway with champion angler Joe Mailer. Court pickup begins at 7.30 a.m. on the island. And also, Matisse and Picasso with Dottie Megan. Menus for your weekend. In the Crystal Room, the Crystal Platter on Friday is fish cakes with rice pilaf and wilted spinach. For dinner, the special is the seafood buffet for $14.95. And the soup of the day is New England clam chowder. 
In the Island Cafe for lunch on Friday, there's a barbecue pork sandwich with chips for six ninety five. The dinner special is Chef's Choice for seven ninety five. Dinner specials in the Palm Grill on Friday are lamb chops for twenty ninety five or veal marsala for fifteen ninety five. On Saturday, the Crystal Room is closed. In the Island Cafe for lunch on Saturday, enjoy a chili cheeseburger with onion rings for six ninety five. The dinner special is Chef's Choice for seven ninety five. Dinner specials in the Palm Grill on Saturday are prime rib for eighteen ninety five, or beef bourguignon for fifteen ninety five. On Sunday, the Crystal Room features its Sunday brunch for seventeen fifty. In the Island Cafe for lunch on Sunday, enjoy a Philly cheesesteak panini with chips for six ninety five. The dinner special is Chef's Choice for seven ninety five, and the Palm Grill is closed on Sundays. All menus are available twenty four hours a day at www.shellpoint.net. Hi, Randy Woodson. I'm here with Pastor Andy today. We're looking forward to the weekend. Here it is, the end of September already, and concluding our study in the book of Ephesians. We're coming down the home stretch. Yeah, now we started this home stretch two weeks ago with a look at the first verses of Ephesians mm-hmm. chapter 6. That's correct. And putting on the full armor of God. Well, that's correct. So what is our plan as we approach the consideration of that v- chapter here this weekend? Yeah, well, the first message in that uh, part of Ephesians really had to do uh, with the nature nature of the enemy. You know, we do have an enemy of our souls, and uh, what's he like, and what difference does that make in our lives, and uh, and so we looked at that the first week, and then you might remember John Stumbo really sort of uh, sort of piggybacked on that idea mm-hmm. in speaking about the strength that we need that only Christ can supply, mm-hmm. and so now uh, we're going to take a look this Sunday. We're going to take a look at the uh, the full armor of God. We're going to understand, try to understand what that means. Okay. And obviously, there's a great metaphor in there. In fact, there are multiple metaphors in the armor, armor passage uh, that help us know how to be prepared for the conflict when it comes. And we certainly have the resources, thanks to the Lord, to we, be prepared. We do have the resources. Yeah. Uh, I think it's the kind of thing that uh, people are often caught off guard when the insult or the conflict comes. And if they're not prepared, boy, it can be a really rough go. Mm-hmm. But there are things in the scripture that uh, help us understand how to be prepared to do that and, and the resources. Are, are supplied. Christ provides those resources, and we're going to find out what they are this Sunday morning. Okay. And I know Sunday morning, obviously, as you're speaking, continuing mm-hmm. that series, we'll be looking forward to hearing your wife sing for us. Yeah. Sunday morning, Jean will be singing as we share in the worship service and, of course, the choir. And so it's another great opportunity for the church and community to gather together to worship the Lord. Absolutely. I always love to hear my favorite soprano. Oh, yes. Absolutely. It'll be a delight. I'm privileged yes. to accompany her. And, and speaking of music... Uh, we're going to do something a little different on Sunday evening than we have been doing because yes. we're going to have a musically oriented service. It's going to actually be a hymn festival. Tell us about that. It is somewhat a hymn festival. It's been exciting this past summer. I've been working with Ruth Duber, and mm-hmm. she and I put together a collection of uh, hymns that are somewhat the favorites of the church that represent the diversity of hymnology from the gospel songs to the mm-hmm. traditional hymns. And uh, so we'll be having dramatic presentations, hearing the story behind the hymns read in first person, as well as the scripture references that give substance to the texts that have been written. Fabulous. So we look forward to that. Sunday night, Ruth Duber is directing. We have about 26 readers involved. Wow. About eight various hymns, or some sung by the choir, the congregation, and solos. And so it should be a wonderful opportunity for us to sing these hymns that are our favorites, mm-hmm. but also to hear the stories behind the hymns. So I hope folks will come out Sunday night and be a part of that time of singing. You know, I think I'll come, both services. Well, great. I plan to be there, and we'll count on you. Okay. I trust that you'll join us as well. Sunday morning at 1015, Sunday night for the hymn festival at 615, and then as well for the fellowship time that will follow. And, of course, remind you that if you're not uh, able to get out to the morning service, you can always tune in on Shell Point TV Channel 12 and see the service as it is broadcast live. Well, it's going to be a great weekend. Look forward to seeing you there. It's time now for our Shell Point TV Week in Review. And to help us along is my colleague, Rochelle Trinowski. Rochelle. Thank you very much, Dan. We began this week at the Larson Pavilion, where helping residents to the salon is an important volunteer duty. Hi, I'm Terry Coleth, and I am here in the salon in the Larson Pavilion. And I'm going to be speaking with our salon manager, Robin Church, and one of our volunteers in the salon who lives in Coquina, and that would be Carol Ashley. 
Thanks for joining me, ladies. Thank you, Terry. Pleasure. We are looking for some more support in the salon here in the Pavilion, Carol. And I wanted to talk with you because you've told me many times how much you enjoy volunteering here. I do, very much. Tell me a little bit about what you do. What would somebody do if they came into the same role you fill here? I'm here to do whatever the beauticians or the residents request me to do. Um, it could be anything. One time I had a resident ask me to do a line dance while she sat under the hairdryer to pass the time quickly. <laughs> it could be forming a new idea for a new activity. Some of the Springs residents asked me to do that and we have our Happy Feet Dance Club. Um, whatever they need done, whatever I can do, most of the time I'm transferring residents to and from their room. But you bring up a very good point. The salon is a very social place. Wonderful. It's something that our residents look so forward to visiting, especially here in the pavilion. They do, and when I present the mirror to them at the end of their appointment and see the huge smile that crosses their face, there's, there's no other high like that. It's just wonderful. It is, to make sure people are having a good time in their day. Even living in a skilled nursing facility, there's so many things that can brighten your day and add quality to your exactly. life. Exactly, and they brighten my day every time I'm here. Well, I also want to point out that you do not need to be a licensed beautician to volunteer here in the salon. At Certainly the not, I'm not. <laughs> you are a teacher, a retired teacher, exactly. not so f retired. You've been doing a lot of teaching recently. Yes, I did. But and your love of people and the way you want to make somebody's day a little brighter is what brings you here. I know, Carol Ashley. That's true. Very Robin, true. what is the value of having resident volunteers here helping in the salon and the pavilion? I can't say enough about how valuable it is. And Carol is such a gift to us. And so is Shelby. Shelby is another one of our wonderful volunteers. And it really just helps to make the experience to the salon just that much more pleasant. And it really helps us operate more efficiently because transporting to and from the salon is, is a very, it can be difficult sometimes because the staff get very busy here in the pavilion. So it's really a, a, just a huge help. Now Carol also helps with taking out rollers. She may help with a shampoo and she has just such a loving, caring spirit. It just really, it just transfers to our residents here in the pavilion. And that's something we all have experience with, with our own hair. Right. We've washed our own hair, we've put rollers in and taken rollers out to extend that. And it's just such a nice feeling to have that, that touch, that friendly touch, Absolutely. and that attention paid to somebody sitting in that salon chair. Absolutely. We all feel better, men and women, when our hair is looking good mm -hmm. and it's clean. And, you know, our scalp gets massaged and the staff here, they always do a real good massage when they're doing a shampoo because, you know, that's an important part of the service and it feels good. And that, that touch, that power of touch is so important and really um, transferring that to our customers and our residents here with a lot of love. Absolutely. Well, I think the main thing we want to get across is there's a lot of activity going on here in the skilled nursing facility we call the Larson Pavilion. And all of our resident volunteers in the auxiliary who help with activity are on our activities committee. So we hope that you will join Carol, Ashley, Shelby Merkel, and other activity volunteers in the auxiliary to provide that one-on-one -on -one fun activity for the residents who live here. I'm Terry Coleth. Please give me a call if you would like to help. This week, we welcomed William and Sue Wills to present a dramatic monologue about the presidents and their first ladies. Here's how they got started. I got involved in college, and Sue had just always been sort of interested, and she joined a local community theater in Baltimore. And after I graduated college, I ended up in that same community theater group. And then in 1970, on May the 15th, I asked her on a date, and on May the 30th, I proposed to her. I went to the hotel business and did very well in a couple of years. I was the general manager of a 250 room Sheridan Hotel in Ocean City. And we had our third child. And then we walked away from all of it. I came home one day and I said to Sue, we're going to start a children's theater, Sue. And I'm going to leave my you job. Ask me. I no, ask. What would you think about starting right. a children's theater? I did. And I said, I'll write the scripts and you write the music and you do the costuming and I'll build the sets and you make the sets. 
The only thing is we had never done any of that before. We risked every penny we had and in three months lost it all. Ironically, this lady who we met through our children's theater, we run into her one day later on. She's the head of our local elder hostel. She said, well, do you have any other ideas of what we could do? And I too gave me, for Christmas, a set of books on the presidents and the first ladies. Because I wanted to read them. <laughs> <laughs> but I got my hands on it and I found out every story was extremely interesting. So I suggested, and Sue said yes, that we teach a course together trying to show the personal side of these names in history. I would do the hairdos and we would use the accents and we maybe would add a hat or a cigar or that kind of little mm. props like that. I suppose you invited um, the Fords over for dinner and when it was over you said to them, Jerry Bate, would you stand up and just tell us your life story? So they might at some point in time be talking directly to you at another point in time, they might recreate a scene with themselves. And so over the next five years, we came up with five versions. And that's how basically we started to assemble these shows. And then when we closed our theater operation, we turned it into a tour. And we've been in 35 states doing our shows now. We purposely chose not FDR, not Truman, people that maybe they had heard of, but they didn't know too much about. Calvin Coolidge. Coolidge. Probably have the most humor. Abe Lincoln tells some good stories in there. William she Henry had... Harrison was only president what, for a month. People th tend to really forget about him. But they had, mm, what? I think it was 14. 14 children. And Franklin and Mrs. Pierce. That's, a, that's probably one of the saddest. They had lost two children already. And they had another son, beautiful little boy. She didn't want Franklin to be president. And a month before the presidency, they're in a train wreck. There's one fatality, the little boy. Very old boy. And, and then she finds out. She comes to the conclusion, well, he must have wanted you to give your whole attention to this job of president. That's why Benny was taken. So those are just, I mean, some of the more obscure, but really moving stories that you come upon. He does all the research in the writing. And I will read, I will read some of their biographies just to get a feel of how they acted, how they, you can kind of get how they spoke from letters and people would describe their voices if you don't have voice clips of them. So you kind of work on that. But. Some of the information on some of the early ones are, are hard to get unless they left behind letters and things that people kept like Mrs. Adams or John Quincy Adams' wife, Louisa, Martha. Although Martha Washington burned just about every bit of correspondence she had with George, she, was, she wrote letters constantly to relatives, and a lot of those relatives kept that information. It's bringing back memories, or the ones that they don't know much about. It's just that you made them into more people than just a, a name you know, in, in, in a book. Eventually, uh, I mean, at its height, we would sometimes do 70 shows just here in Florida. And at the height, we would do 300 to 325 shows a year throughout the country. The ones that maybe mean the most to us are when you get to do a president at their presidential site. We would performed both Adams at the Adams Homestead up in Quincy, mm -hmm. Massachusetts. So that was great, right out in the barn and right out on the lawn. And had our pictures taken in their parlor. So in our costumes, it was like we really lived yeah. there. And we did the Trumans, Trumans at the Truman Library and the Hoover at the Hoover Library Museums. It just kind of made it feel a little bit, you know, special www.presladies.com. If you click on them, it takes you to another page. You can read about all 33 couples we do and see three to five minute clips of every show that we have. This is really the simplest form of theater that you can get. I mean, two people standing behind two lecterns. And yet even the presidents who they don't know very much about can be very moving experiences for people. In a lot of ways because there's always something in the story that's going to be the same as somebody's life out there. You know, it might be that, in this case, that, that they lost a child that comes into this play, or that they had a father who sort of disowned them. And it's all Alcoholic kind of little alcohol, alcohol, you know, problems that come in, or successes. Uh, so even though they might not know the history of that particular person when they hear their story, they can either relate to them personally or somebody that they knew and say, you know, that guy was just like Harding. You know, that was really 
Hindmark Bank discussed an investment strategy called Total Return Investing. Hello, I'm Jessica Sowell with Bindmark National Bank and Trust, and today we're talking about different investment strategies. And one that's becoming more common, or one that we're talking about more, is a total return strategy. And here to talk with us about this and other strategies is Terry Bauer, Vice President and Private Wealth Advisor at Findmark. And Terry, thank you for joining us. And before we talk about the total return, I think a lot of investors over time have been more used to an income-oriented strategy. So can we start with that? Certainly. Well, Jessica, what we've seen over the course of time is with interest rates, people have been able to look to primarily fixed income type investments, bond type investments, as being their source of income from their portfolio to augment the other sources they have, be it social security or pensions or whatever the case may be, to meet their living needs. Now things have changed. We've gone from, gosh, high double digit type returns we were seeing back in the early 80s down to virtually zero returns on a lot of CDs and money markets and things of this nature. And as a result, people have been asked and really forced to kind of change the way they look at their portfolio to generate the type of returns they need to maintain and to enhance their lifestyle. And so looking at the different types, also looking more at the big picture, which is the total return strategy and not just looking on getting the income off of uh, the interest. So talk about that. Certainly. Well, this really isn't something new, Jessica. We've seen a lot of foundations and endowments go to this as we've seen interest rates drop. Most of these groups have specific spending policies they have to meet. And when interest rates were high, that was very easy for them to accomplish. But as they've come down, it's been harder and harder to do it just off of the income stream. And as a result, these groups and individuals now are taking a look at the whole portfolio, being willing to take off whatever income the portfolio generates, but also being willing to access some of the capital appreciation they've seen in the portfolio. As a result, portfolios tend to be more balanced, so that you're seeing fixed income investments there that do provide diversification and some income, but not afraid to take and also invest in equities and other growth-oriented securities, uh, looking for that appreciation over time. And it would seem like that if it's more diversified, I mean, just logic would tell you that that's probably safer over the long haul, or if, if things go bad, you're not going to get hit all at once, maybe. Academic studies would suggest that. There's something called the modern portfolio theory that really suggests that uh, a, a portfolio solely of bonds or fixed income investments carries higher risk than does one that has even just a small amount of equities included in it. But it really comes down to addressing the needs you have. Uh, what we've encouraged groups to do and people to do is to take a look at their take a look at their history. That's just to take a look at their checkbook. And what has your requirement been the last six months, the last 12 months? And to look at that, recognizing what type of yield you're getting off your portfolio and being willing to take and scrape off a little bit of that appreciation uh, in a portfolio in order to meet that goal. Do you, do you find that that makes investors nervous who are used to one way of doing things maybe for many years? Sure. Uh, what are you seeing? Because I know you talk to a lot of different people. We do. And a lot of people f uh, at first wonder about that. They view it, uh, the equity markets as significantly more risky than the bond market. But in the environment we're in, and the way that we see the economy going forward, we would certainly expect to see more volatility in the fixed income markets. So I think there's a uh, an acceptance of considering this type of uh, strategy more and more as we go forward. So do you see any downsides or, or I mean, is it all positive or, I mean, obviously there's still risk. There's still risk, it's, exactly. You know, the, the diversification is a big part of it. Being able to um, address inflation is a big part of it uh, in this type of investment. And how does inflation affect it? Well, you, we've all read about low inflationary environment, 2% the government tells us. Um, but I think we also recognize that a lot of the folks here at Shell Point are seeing a little bit higher inflation with, between health care costs, food costs, gasoline costs. Their, their costs are moving up more rapidly than perhaps 
the general economy is recognizing it. So by having some growth in the portfolio, you're able to address that as well. So it, it helps to take and address the, 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 the future needs that you're going to recognize as well. So what, in conclusion, advice would you give to someone who's now listening to this and thinking, ah, maybe I need to make some changes? Sure. What, what would you advise them to do? Well, number one, seek some counsel. Uh, secondly, as I mentioned, try to get a feel for what your, your costs are, your day-to-day -day expenses are. And then I would say if you're, say, 5% and your portfolio is generating 3%, to set an overall return target for the entire portfolio of 5%, say, plus the rate of inflation, so that uh, you're accounting for that and moving forward. Potential downsides to something of this nature is always the unforeseen, you know, be it in the markets, being in the, your personal life. That, that can change things around, too. And as a result, you can't get married to the investments or to the strategy, but rather you have to be constantly reviewing the in, individual investments in the portfolio considering your outlook for the markets and the economy going forward and what your future needs may be from the, uh, the monies that the portfolio generates. All right, Terry Bauer, thank you so much. If you would like to talk with Terry, if you have any questions, you can call the bank on the island. Tiffany is there. And the number is 461-5999. Now, you're at our Riverwalk office, but I know that you're out at Shell Point quite a bit talking, a bit. talking to people here, so you're a familiar face. If you're a client or not, we'd be more than happy to talk with you. So again, 461-5999. Terry, thank you so much. You. I'm Jessica Stowell with Bymark National Bank and Trust. Fitness supervisor Michelle Smith has begun a new weekly group to discuss diets, exercise, and overall healthy living. Let's learn more about it. I'm Mary Franklin here today with Michelle Smith, the fitness supervisor, to talk about an exciting new program in the Health Connection starting on October 1st. It is titled Living Healthy. It's going to meet every Tuesday at 11.45 a.m. for 30 minutes in the Osprey Room. Michelle, what is Living Healthy all about? I'm very excited to offer this class, and the class is all about um, being active, living a healthy lifestyle, your overall wellness. So we're going to meet for about 30 minutes once a week, employees and residents together, to discuss our healthy living options, how we can increase possibly our exercise or decrease our caloric intake with meals, just topics that we want to learn more about. This is all about the class. And Shell Point decided since the residents were doing LifeQuest, we have introduced LifeQuest to all of our employees and we thought this would be a great mutual program that everyone can go to and receive a lot of great information. Now Michelle, you have had some past experience in this? Absolutely. I work for five years at a leading um, weight loss and nutrition company, so I bring a lot of credibility and experience um, to the class that I'm very excited about. And you'll be teaching most of the classes, but you'll bring in some guest speakers as well. Cheryl, Mel, and Craig, our other fitness coordinators, will be joining me to present their specialty from time to time. So it's not always going to be me presenting the topic. I also um, ask for suggestions from residents and employees on what they're interested in too. And so this isn't so much as you're weighing in every week, it's more about checking in, getting tips, so that if your goal is to lose weight, this would be a great place to get some inspiration or just learning how to live well, correct? Correct, there will be no scale, no measuring, just a group setting where we can talk about health and exercise and fitness. Well, a lot of people have been asking for this program. We are excited to bring it to you. It will start on Tuesday, October 1st. It will run every Tuesday. No need to sign up, just come when you can in the Osprey Room at 11.45 a.m. I am Mary Franklin along with Michelle Smith. We hope you make it a happy and healthy day. Ruth Duber gave us a recipe from her What's Cooking Kitchen, Pine Island Shrimp. Hello, I'm Ruth Duber and this is What's Cooking right here at Shell Point. I have a fun recipe today. It's called Pine Island Shrimp. Now, I don't know even where I found the recipe, but I've been using it for several years. And it calls for a half a stick of butter. I personally think that's too much butter, uh, so I don't use quite a half a stick. 
and I don't think it makes any difference in the in the final results. And what we're going to do, we're going to saute our mushrooms. The butter is ready and we'll add our minced onions and we'll add those mushrooms that I had fun cutting up. It calls for a half a cup of mushrooms and it's two tablespoons of the minced onions. So we're just going to saute these up a little bit. Now the recipe calls for a dash of garlic powder, but I don't do well with a dash because I like garlic powder. So we'll give it a couple shakes here. Is it some of the cooking shows you can't have too much garlic? Unless of course you don't like it, you know. These are just about tender enough. And we're going to stir in a tablespoon and a half of flour. Now when that's pretty well incorporated, we're going to stir in a half a cup of chicken broth. And it's best to keep on stirring so that you don't get lumps. And it calls for two tablespoons of white wine. Uh, that isn't necessary. You could just add the two tablespoons to your chicken broth uh, and not use the wine. But the alcohol does cook off. So, oh, that's starting to look pretty good. And we're going to stir this until it thickens. Yeah, so the consistency is getting pretty good there. Now we're going to put in our shrimp. Now you can serve this um, over rice or over pasta. So I'm just going to zap that just a little bit. And this is a half a cup of sour cream. And this is the reduced fat. So despite the butter, uh, this isn't too bad. Now you don't want to boil it after you've added the sour cream because that'll make it separate. I just want to see if it's, if it's warm enough. Mmm, it's perfect. That sour cream gives it just a little bit of a tang. So, take out our pasta. And let's put on some of the shrimp. And make sure we get some of those great mushrooms in there. You can add as much sauce as you want. And then we'll put on a little bit of parsley. And that's it. There's not much to it. It really is very simple. And uh, you can make the recipe larger or, you know, cut it back, however you'd like to do it. But I hope you'll try it. The recipe beyond www.shellpoint.net under what's cooking. Mmm. Mmm. That's mighty good. I hope you try it. Bye bye. We have a new fitness coordinator at Shell Point, Craig Norling. Here he talks about two fitness classes that will improve your balance. I'm Mary Franklin with an upcoming Health Connections program, Balance and Mobility Training. We're going to talk about level one and two today with our new fitness coordinator, Craig Norling. Welcome to Shell Point, Craig. Thank you. Well, let's learn a little bit about you before we talk about our balance classes. Tell us about you. Where'd you get your education? What are you all about, Craig? Well, I went to school at Heritage Institute. Uh, it's in Fort Myers. I got a degree in personal training, and right now I'm at FGCU uh, working on a degree in physical therapy. So how did you hear about Shell Point? My wife actually works here. Okay, and she's at Friendly Voice on 2190Gen, right? She is, yes. Well, let's get down to balance and mobility classes. What can someone expect from signing up for one of your classes? Well, they, they can learn, obviously, the balance. Um, we work on a lot of flexibility, balance, and uh, a lot of strength for the upper and lower body. And balance is one of those things that you can progressively lose over time. And so we really want to keep strong and work on that. 
You also are going to be teaching level one and level two. Can you tell me how does someone know which one to sign up for? Well, on level two is a little bit more challenging. Um, if you're able to hold one leg in the air for about 20 seconds, then you're probably ready for level two. Craig, what kind of apparatuses do you use during your classes and what is a sample of one of your exercises? We use a lot of different like hand weights like dumbbells and we have uh, small weighted balls that we use. Uh, most of the time we just use a chair just for balance and for a little support and we do stuff where you can just like bring one leg up and hold it for a limited time. Also we do a lot of stuff with your eyes closed. So I'll have them hold it and have your eyes closed. And by the end of the session hopefully you don't have to use the chair as much as you did at the beginning, correct? Correct, yes. It's going to be a wonderful class, and Craig, I know you're going to be a wonderful instructor. You've been working with Michelle Smith the last couple of weeks, teaching her classes and co-teaching, so it will be a smooth transition. Should be. All right. Well, Balance Level 1 will be run on Mondays and Wednesdays starting October 2nd, running for 12 weeks. And they're going to meet in the health club at 1.45 to 2.30. It's a 45-minute class. And balance and mobility training level two starts on October 1st. They're meeting on Tuesdays and Thursdays in the Island Health Club, and their time is 2.45 to 3.30. This is some wonderful opportunities for all of you here at Shell Point. Craig, thanks for being here today. I'm Mary Franklin, make it a happy and healthy one. The scrapbooking group meets every Wednesday in the Tarpon Room, but it's so much more than just putting photos in a book. Let's learn more about all the projects they've undertaken. A scrapbook is a uh, combination of your photos and an ornamental way to display them in an acid-free book with acid-free products to save the photos forever. A photo album is what we used to do and now what we're doing is taking those photos so that they don't deteriorate over time and we're doing embellishments. We're adding things, we're creating the story and through the pictures, and some of us are doing journaling and adding the stories so that in future generations, they can not just see the picture, they get the, the big picture. You make your scrapbook for a purpose or for no purpose. I make mine for no purpose. I do a couple pages of whatever I wanna do and put them all in one book. Most people pick a subject and they might do a grandchild and give that grandchild the book for their birthday. Uh, they might do their mom, they might do a funeral book for someone who just died and they bring it to the funeral. And there's a lot of different ways you can do that. Some of us are also combining it with genealogy. I've done books on all the family members, even great-grandchildren now. So it's creating memories, it's sharing, and leaving a life history. This is a book that I had made for my mom and dad for their 50th anniversary. And it was all just pictures in there. So I'm now taking the book apart and I'm making pages that are now uh, from the same book. If you want to do inexpensively, you can just get a folder like they have in school. And I made copies of our reunion. This is one that I did on one reunion. and. I gave it to everybody, so it was very economical. And then this is another eight and a half by 11 photo. That was for my mom's funeral. And then I'm doing Christmas letters. And I have each year. This was done by my son when we went to NASA. And so most of it is just pictures, you know. So I need to improve on the fixing it up for a scrapbook instead of just having it in a notebook. Those are scissors that make very pretty little cuttings like this, cutting around pictures and things, and it just embellishes it so that it looks really, really nice, you know, so. And I'm, I'm very happy now that Kay decided to do this again because, you know, it's been a long time for me, but I'm enjoying it tremendously. I'm just sorting materials now for a scrapbook that I'm gonna make that ties in with the genealogy research I'm doing on my father's father. He came from Hungary in 19, 1904, and he went to work in the copper mines in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. And so what I'm doing today is just sorting through those materials to decide what I'm gonna use. 
but I'm having a good time looking at this. It's just a, it's a wonderful hobby. Debbie has a completely different idea on scrapbooking with a lot of embellishments. And these are scrapbook pages she also did. It's not a class, but we are teaching while we're also doing our own projects. And everyone in here is willing to help someone. And she spoke about Mildred. Mildred had never done scrapbooking before. She was here three times. And both the first two times, she was everyone was telling her what to do, but she couldn't start. So she finally started, and now she's doing it at home. And she's amazing. She's teaching now. I had boxes and boxes and boxes of photos. So I thought, how long am I going to save these, and when can I ever look at them? So I decided, when I heard about this, I was going to come and learn. So I brought some pictures, and then I looked at what everybody was doing, but I was scared to do it myself. I thought, oh, I'll mess that up. I can't do it. I can't do it. Now, I started out with this one. This is a, just to see if I could do it. I learned from the girls here, you know, to how to make a page beautiful. And this is like the family tree that I learned from Doris. And so I had fun, and I do have fun, and I do it at home, and I, after I get up in the morning, I see what I have to do. <laughs> I just have fun doing it, and they think it's pretty good. I learned after two classes. <laughs> we teach and learn. We're teachers, and we learn, and all these supplies all down there are all donated so everybody can help one another, and so we buddy up. I've learned a lot from them. I didn't know the corner cutter. I was doing it with the scissors all these years, and you can, there it is. She, uh, Joy showed me how to do it. I love it. But do another one. <laughs> yeah, they've been wonderful. She's been a joy to me. <laughs> well, this is a Christmas card I received last year, and I thought it was so adorable. I wanted to copy it and make a centerpiece for my table. So this is Fine Art 101, <laughs> you know. I've never tried anything like this before, but there's so much talent here. I'm getting so much help, but I'm loving it. I'm learning so much. I used to paint and I painted my cards. And then one day, one of my friends that I painted with said, why don't you try card making? And I said, well, that's what I'm doing. And she said, no, she said, come with me. So I went and I got hooked. Cards are very similar to scrapbooking, and you can make it as easy or as hard as you want. Uh, you can do things on the computer, you can just add paper, you can stamp it, you can add an embellishment. You know somebody that you haven't seen in a long time, send them a card. Wish them happy birthday. If you talk to anyone that does scrapbooking or card making, they'll say the same thing. that uh, We get together, we have a lot of fun, and we exchange ideas. So. Uh, like I didn't have enough of some product and somebody over there lent me some foam and somebody else will look at something and say, oh, I can do that. You make various kinds of lace, the kind that uh, lends itself to cards and bookmarks and I use it for my little sunbonnet girls on my cards. Got my adhesives in here. I've got scissors that snap. I've got fancy scissors. They make different edges on them. I work with ribbons. I work with um, punches, paper shapers. We shape the paper to what we want them to use. The fun thing about this and the ladies who got this together is uh, the camaraderie. Everyone's very friendly and um, the ideas you get from other people. and. Look at the things people have volunteered to give to us, to donate. Uh, for instance, this box is full of wonderful things. It probably took someone a long time to um, collect, and we get the privilege of trying it out and using it ourselves. I never did the scrapbooking or anything when I was young, and now I'm finding all this creativeness coming out and doing the storytelling as well. The first time is the hardest, and then I find the more I do, the more I get into I'm addicted to it. And I find that when like when I leave here, I'll go home after five hours here, I'll go home just more. It's all different types and we share ideas and I think that's what makes it so much fun. It's better to look at this and I'll never drag out all the pictures in the in the boxes. That's not important. Important is to get it in one place. 
We would like to invite anyone who might have an interest, come by and see us. You don't have to bring anything if you just want to check us out. And uh, it's Wednesdays, it starts at 9.15, we're here until 2. You can bring your lunch, you can go for lunch and come back, you can come and go whenever you want, no cost. And we have a lot of supplies that we share. If you really want to do it, bring some pictures and a pair of scissors, check us out, and then you can buy the items. And you can do it cheaply or expensively. If you have any interest whatsoever in any of these things, you are most welcome because we're all willing to help and share. We're glad you joined us for today's show. Tune in next week for more stories and news from around your community. Until then, this is Shell Point Today for the weekend of September 27th, 28th, and 29th. I'm Dan Philgreen. And I'm Rochelle Chernowski. From all of us here at Shell Point TV, we hope you have a great weekend, and we'll see you again on Monday.